Welcome back, Jimmy Buffett fans. I am David Kay, and this is another episode of All the Stories That I Can Tell, coming to you from Key West, Florida, specifically beautiful and historic Mallory Square. And Jimmy Buffett fans know that on January the 9th, 1976, Jimmy Buffett and the Coral Reefers played a concert here. And that concert was in support of a brand new re released album that came out on January the 1st, 1976, called Havana Day Dreamin'. Specifically, what people remember about that concert was how bitterly cold it was down here in Key West. Uh, the temperature was in the 50s, but there was a strong breeze that was coming off of the water, and it was just cutting through everything. Key Westers do not do well with cold weather, and that was a tough one. But Jimmy and the Co Coral Reefers were able to get through 18 songs. A large portion of those songs were off that brand new album, like I said, Havana Day Dreamin', and it was in support of that album. So what we're going to do on this vlog today is we're going to talk about the formation of the Coral Reefer Band and how they put that band together and eventually put out Havana Day Dreamin', which came out on January 1st, 1976. Along the way, we're gonna stop at a couple of places that Jimmy played uh, in his very early days down here in Key West. After the chart room, he hit a couple of spots on Duval, so we're gonna stop by and see those as well too. But this is gonna be about how the Coral Reefer Band came together, how they created that sound that we, uh, that we learned and loved, and how they brought those albums to life. So stick around, I think you guys are gonna enjoy this one. Behind me is a location that used to be Howie's Lounge. I'm down here at 109 Duval Street. So Jimmy comes down, uh, falls in love with Key West, starts living down here, now he has to make a living. And he's playing up at the chart room basically for drinks. So he needs to get some paying gigs. And one of the first places that he ever played down here in Key West was right here at 109 Duval Street, Howie's Lounge. This was a piano bar, it's very popular with the Navy. It's kind of a classy place from what I understand. And this is where Jimmy would start to play. So you can see now he's starting to integrate himself onto the island and actually have a occupation and a vocation to go along with his permanent vacation. 109 Duval Street. Howie's Lounge, early, early Jimmy Buffett. This is where he helped to get his start, playing right there in that corner. Come down and visit it. Six fifteen Duval Street. This was the site of the former Crazy Ophelia's Cafe, and this is another location, very odd, where Jimmy Buffett would have his early gigs, chart room. Howie's this location. Um, he started playing here probably for next to nothing or probably just for drinks like he was doing everywhere else. But this is another location where Jimmy started out playing. Now, another interesting thing about this is this is where he allegedly uh, performed for the first time or one of the first times as his alter ego, Marvin Gardens, and uh, had his backup singers. Let me see if I get them all here. Kitty Litter. K. Pasa and Fay Ray, who were some of uh, Jimmy's friends that lived down here as well too. Um, but Crazy Ophelia's, this was a coffee house. It is now a wine bar. It looks like a pretty nice little restaurant. You get the opportunity to stop by and recognize that this was one of the early places where Jimmy Buffett played. Okay, so quick clarification before we get started. When I refer to the formation of the Coral Reefer Band, I'm not talking about uh, some of the members that are still with them today that were longtime members that go back to the early 70s with Jimmy, Mike Utley, Doyle Grisham, and to some extent, Fingers Taylor as well too. What I am talking about um, was the group of musicians that would become the Coral Reefer Band that would tour with Jimmy in support of not only Havana Day Dreamin', but also all of the albums that would come after that. And this was done at the behest of the record label that wanted him to form his own band to do so. Up until that point, Jimmy had relied a lot on studio musicians when he was recording these albums. But now he was gonna have his own band, not only in the studio, but on the road. So I wanted to make that point when we talk about the formation of the Coral Reefer Band. So, Quick little fun fact before we go to these locations where Jimmy Buffett formed the Coral Reefer Band. We have to go back to one of the other reasons that the Coral Reefer Band was formed. Besides the record companies urging Jimmy to do so, Jimmy recognized the need for it as well too. And you can find the story from Jimmy himself in the liner notes 
of the Havana Day Dreamin' album. And in it, he cites a concert that he was at in Raleigh, North Carolina, where he was in a dressing room with Roger Bartlett. And he says to Roger, as they're surrounded by screaming fans all around, to words to this effect, Jimmy said something along the lines of, I can't do this shit much longer. We need a band. So really, that's probably the first acknowledgement from Jimmy that the Coral Reefer Band needed to be formed. So let's go see these locations on how they were able to get the Coral Reefer Band together. Okay, so I am back in the Green Parrot Bar located here on Whitehead Street. Now, if you recall during my last vlog, I had a top 10 list, which the Green Parrot did not quite make it in the top 10 because I could not verify an actual Jimmy Buffett story that took place here in the Green Parrot. Um, so I asked people in the comments, um, are you able to uh, give me any stories or any ideas? And sure enough, people got a hold of me. And it was also found in the book, uh, Mile Marker Zero and the Movable Feast of Key West, which I highly recommend that you do, that you read. So, take you back in time. So Jimmy, uh, the record studio, uh, wanted Jimmy to form the Coral Reefer Band. And Jimmy put the call out to all of those guys that I mentioned before, Bartlett, Greg, Fingers Taylor. Fingers Taylor and Jimmy knew each other from college. They went to the University of Southern Mississippi together. They went to college together. And uh, so, and they used to play some small little gigs and dorm rooms and things like that on campus. So. Jimmy knew that he needed a harmonica player, and he knew how damn good um, Fingers was. So he put the call out to Fingers and said, Hey, Fingers, I'm forming this band. I'm down here in Key West. Um, I need you to be a part of it. Fingers accepted. He said, Okay, Jimmy, sounds great. I will be down there, but how am I going to know where to find you? Well, Jimmy said, Well, just go down to Ball Street, and you will find me. So, Fingers comes down here to Key West, and no, he did not find Jimmy on Duval Street. Instead, he walked into the Green Parrot Bar, and laying on the pool table, spread eagle, drunk as can be, Jimmy Buffett. And probably the most valuable member of the Coral Reefer Band, Greg Fingers Taylor, was reunited with Jimmy Buffett and they would go ahead and begin their rehearsals and eventually cut the album that we came to be known as a vanity dreaming now they're going to need a place to play before their very first audience so let's go find that the ft sebastian leather company that was the name of this location back in the mid 1970s it was a leather shop owned by tom corcoran tom corcoran as we know was the bartender that very first night when jimmy buffett came to key west and served jimmy his very first beer and he became a great friend with jimmy um, and still to this day so mid 1970s 1975 a1a had come out a1a had a, a, a lot of success um, it, Jimmy was growing in popularity and his record company, the AB, ABC Dunhill Record Company, um, decided that Jimmy needed to have his own band. Jimmy knew that as well too. He was going out on tour and it was time to form his own band and stop relying on the studio musicians that he had been doing for studio albums. So he formed what we now know today as the Coral Reefer Band. And when it became apparent that Jimmy had to form his own band, he reached out to a lot of the musicians that he'd worked with over the years. Um, Roger Bartlett, the great Fingers Taylor. So, Fingers Taylor, uh, Roger Bartlett, and others, and I'm sorry if I forget their names, I will scroll them across the bottom because they are original coral reefers. So they descended upon Key West, and then they had to begin to find that chemistry together that um, we know of those albums. So they reached out to Tom Corcoran, who owned this as a leather shop, but it used to be a auto repair shop prior to that. So it was pretty industrially built for sound. Um, and they wanted to play here and rehearse and get their tunes down and get their sound down. So Tom let them play here. And this is where the Coral Reefer Band first converged 
and first built that chemistry and played those early songs that would eventually become the Havana Daydreaming album. And I don't know about you, but that is my favorite album that Jimmy ever put out, and it is the most Key West album of all of them. But this is where it started. Thank you, Tom Corcoran, for letting them rehearse here. And if you're down here visiting and you get some Chinese food, you go right across the street and there's Fausto's. Get yourself some chocolate milk as well, too. Let's go see another spot. So the call went out to bring the members of the newly formed Coral Reefer Band down to Key West, Florida. The members came down to Key West. They spent many hours rehearsing and playing the songs of the album that would eventually become Havana Day Dreamin'. They did that at the FT Sebastian Leather Company down on Fleming Street. Now it was time before they went out on the road across the country to play before their very first live audience. The very first live audience for Jimmy Buffett and the official Coral Reefer Band. And the location that where they would play that very first gig was right here. Now this is the southernmost um, hotel. It is located here at the far end of Simonton Street. And Logan's Lobster House is long gone. But at the time, it was one of the nicer establishments here in Key West. The tie-in on why Jimmy chose to play here was the gentleman named Vic Latham, if you recall from my uh, top 10 vlogs. Um, he had a tie-in here. He was a manager at Logan's Lobster House. He also had a tie-in. He would become the eventual owner of the Full Moon Saloon and also was a manager at the chart room as well, too. So that's the connection with Jimmy. So they get booked to play in front of live bodies here at uh, Logan's Lobster House for their very first gig, playing songs off the soon-to-be-released Havana Day Dreamin' album. So the fee, the attendance, uh, for this concert, get this, all of us that order concert tickets nowadays, for this concert, the first time the Coral Reefer Band and Jimmy Buffett would play before a live audience, the tickets cost one dollar. One dollar. And sitting in the front row uh, to watch this were some of the local dignitaries and celebrities here on Key West at the time. Uh, writers, John Malcolm Brennan, Dotson Raider, and Truman Capote himself, the author of In Cold Blood. So Jimmy was a little nervous seeing that these uh, outstanding distinguished writers were in attendance and he said we better be good. And they played the very first concert together right here. Logan's Lobster House, former location, dead end of Simonton Street right here on the water. Logan's Lobster House is long gone, but the fact that the Coral Reefer Band played their very first gig here should never be forgotten. So think about that next time we go to a Jimmy Buffett concert and we see the latest incarnation of the Coral Reefer Band. This is where it started. Tickets were $1 and the rest is history. Well, all right, there it is. So on this episode, we chronicled some of Jimmy's earliest gigs that he played down in Duval Street as he was trying to make a name for himself in Key West and in the business. We also chronicled the establishment and the very first Coral Reefer Band. And over the past 50 years now, the Coral Reefer Band has joined Jimmy on stage as they've toured not only the entire country, but the entire world. There have been dozens of Coral Reefer members over the years, and we want to say thank you to all of them for being a part of that magical group. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to hit the subscribe, hit the like, hit the notification. I am so happy that you were able to join me again on this episode. So to all you parrot heads, until next time, fins up.